final duet from Omori is one of the most beautiful and melancholic pieces from video games in recent memory. I particularly like the more traditional approach to writing melody as if it was a romantic classical piece in the vein of Fritz Kreisler, Beethoven, Antonin Dvorak, or Joe Hisaishi, if you were looking at more modern examples. This means that the music is mainly driven by the melodic line instead of being carried by other musical elements such as rhythm or harmony in the case of other types of music. In this video, we are going to do a deep dive on the piece and an arrangement breakdown of how I attempted to make this sad piece even sadder. Let's go! So what makes this song sad? Aside from the tragic backstory from within the game, when analyzed as a standalone piece of music, what makes this song sad is actually a multiple layer of answers. First, the melody itself. Aside from being written with a melancholic mood in mind, it also uses a lot of semitone ornaments that is characteristic to some of the romantic and classical pieces, such as Humoresque by Antonin Dvorak or Minuet in G by Beethoven, giving it a feeling of music that is more personal and closer to the heart, like a mother singing a lullaby to a child. Second, the use of a slow waltz gives it an ambiance similar to an intimate dance or a ballerina doing a slow, solo dance number. Thirdly, the tempo and the pace of the piece itself incorporates a lot of rubato, also known as intentional pauses and slowing of the tempo, giving it a feeling that the performer is not in a rush and taking their time to fully express their emotions. Fourthly, the harmonic progression of the piece likes to linger in unresolved chords and taking its sweet time before finishing the cadence, giving it the feeling of things left hanging, unresolved, and unanswered. The intro of Final Duet is very idiomatic to a piano or keyboard instrument. The ability to do fast, multiple octave arpeggios is a very pianistic characteristic, but I wanted my arrangement to be only for string instruments because that is what I do. So I found a compromise for classical guitar that would use lesser octaves but would still capture the downward feeling of the original piano intro. This part is actually what took me the longest to figure out musically. In the original piece, the melody is initiated by the piano treble part, but I wanted my version's melody to start with the violin right away, so I transcribed the right-hand parts of the piano to the violin while also keeping the original's violin counterpoint. For the chordal accompaniment, the guitar was the optimal choice among my arsenal of instruments and it also gives a fireplace jam kind of vibe, which I always love. For the final details, I wanted to have a deeper bass sound, but I didn't like it when I tried my acoustic bass guitar. So I decided to use a MIDI cello, and it was the perfect bass combination for the soaring violin melodies. So what did I do to make this song even sadder? Two words. More violins. There is a reason why the violin is such a popular instrument. It is one of the few melodic type of instruments that sounds the closest to a human voice, thus making it almost as expressive as somebody singing. A really expressive vibrato on the violin produces a similar mood to a soprano singing a romantic aria. So in that sense, 
the violin itself is kind of a cheat code to add more expressiveness to an instrumental composition. I used a ton of deep vibrato with multiple layers of violin to really convey and express that melancholic mood. Do you want to hear my full arrangement of this piece? If you really, really want to hear it now, pluck that like button and you will hear it right now. Enjoy! If you enjoy that, it is now also available on Spotify and all music streaming platforms. This is my first time doing an in-depth musical analysis and arrangement breakdown of video game music. Let me know in the comments section if you want me to do this some more. And for more of my content, click here. <laughs>